going on YouTube? It's your boy Chaz Custom Custom Model Cars coming at you guys with another exciting model kit review. And this model kit review today is a, is on a very rare kit, especially for the price that I paid for it. Um, scored it off eBay for twenty six ninety nine. Shipping was like eleven dollars and fourteen cents, which is not bad a deal. You know, thirty eight, whatever it comes out to be, um, not bad a deal. Especially the ones that I saw, which wasn't many. There was probably about a total of seven when i was on there three of those were um open kits that were glue bombs or missing parts and the other ones were new um going for a hundred dollars and up it was just ridiculous um but it's understandable because the rarity of this kit and it's never been reissued after the uh i guess it's been reissued like three times since it came out but it's never been reissued as of you know today or anything like that and i wish Revell would kind of bring it back but I'm just glad to have it part of my collection and uh, I was going to use this kit as a um, uh, for the parts to restore my other build and then um, got it in the mail and I had a change of, change of heart um, due to the fact because it is a new kit and everything like that I decided why not just have two of them and that kit I'm talking about is Ravel's 51 Henry J Gasser which is in partnership with Model King um, skill level I would say skill level 3 Scale level four, somewhere around there. That's just my opinion. One twenty fifth scale. Of course, you're going to need your um, your basic um, stuff, your glue uh, for assembly, and your paint, spray paint, and all that stuff, and a little bit of creativity and a bunch of imagination. So there you go. But um, I don't recommend this for beginners or those that are starting out because this can be a very frustrating kit. Though you can use this as a parts kind of kit if you like. Or if you're feeling brave, I mean, you can do that too. You can build this up and whatever. But I only recommend this kit for those that are experienced with um, dealing with these um, problem kits and stuff like that. So, And from experience, these are problem kits, you know. So I will share with you guys um, what's been changed in this kit compared to the uh, Demons and, and uh, the, the Saints and Demons one, um, which mine is molded in blue and everything like that. So, But um, on a scale of 1 through 10, I give this... A medium seven so I don't give it anything higher as you can see you have the box art here which is kind of disappointing they didn't include this lip in the kit but I guess I'll have to make my own but here you have the uh, the box art here um, very cool indeed and then on this side you have the built model with the uh, background picture of the father and son kind of doing the father and son project and then here you have the built model going down the racetrack and same with this side and in this one, um, some guy drew this picture and everything like that of the car itself. And then on the, here, you got some some more information regarding Model King and scale modeling by Chris and all that stuff. So, um, but yeah, so let's go ahead and uh, crack this bad boy open and share it to you guys' content. So, if you guys are ready, let's do this. As you guys can see, the box is not really filled up that much. Um, so, I guess it's easier to put stuff in and take it out and all that stuff. So. Here you have the um, body, you have your one bag of parts here, you have your chrome tree, you have your um, tires, and then you have your um, set of instructions of course, on the decal with the um, protective paper. Um, this kit, particular kit, was issued. Oh, it don't say. It don't say. Oh, 2006. So that's when it was issued. So, um, oh, and you also have your, your uh, window um, clear plastic here, too. So here on your instructions, you have... Um, the information regarding the car, your paint call out, some more information here. On the back you have your decal placement and where everything goes. This does fold out like a book and you get some uh, part call outs too, what the parts are, assembly instructions. Um, it's pretty easy to follow, um, nicely printed as well. So there you go. And. The window itself is in this um, protective plastic, so we're about it scratching, except for this part here, so you have to be very careful. 
And then here um, is your decals, um, the wax paper, of course. So there you go. Very nicely printed, very crisp in detail. So there you go. Pretty cool. And then there's no instructions or anything, but of course you dip these in water. Or you can use Microsoil if you want, which is um, a decal adhesive kind of thing. So, But the, um, the, the, the guy on the decals is different from the guy here though, which is pretty funny. Starting off with the tires, which smells just like cinnamon, like they're fresh baked or something, which is totally weird. I've never had tires smell like this. Um, these are the rear slicks. There's no um, printing on here, just the sidewall detail with the line going around. But um, these are very nice. These are kind of like a resin kind of rubber to it. And I think um, Scale Modeling by Chris had made these tires. And these are the front ones here which are your um, your skinny um, skinny ones. And it's got the Pirelli um, logo on there, some raised lettering, some nice tread detail on that as well. No seam line, no flash, no nothing. Uh, just very nice overall on this uh, compared to the um, old um, the old one, the uh, Saints and Sinners one, or the Saints and Demons. Mine had the, um, the two halves, which... It's hard to glue together and once they're glued they come apart later on because the glue never lasts that long on those tires and it's hard to sand them down too to make them look realistic so you know, I just wanted to point that out but yeah these tires they smell like cinnamon right now like making me hungry <laughs> anyway so here's the um the body and it's got these little uh, braces here one on this side and one here I don't know why this one's there but I guess it keeps everything all together so it does have opening doors, but you have to remove flash here. There's a little flash right here. There's one back here, a very rough line that you have to remove. Um, a little bit around the edges. And under here you have to remove these injector pin marks and this weird lettering thing here. But overall it's a pretty, uh, pretty nicely molded body. And everything like that with a little detail here and there. So that's pretty cool. And then with your chrome tree, uh, which you only get one, it's pretty small. You have your uh, rear rims and your front rims, uh, your shifter. And then you get your little blower set up here, or your blower pieces. Um, of course, your blower's in, in two pieces here. There's your gas pedal. And there's your um, headers, your um, wheelie bar, your steering wheel, valve covers, the steering column holder, your tack right here, which is very bad. As you can see, there's a ejector pin mark right in the middle. There's no, it lacks a lot of detail in there too, which is a letdown. You also get these headlights, which is another letdown. Um, you got your blower belt here. Um, you got your exhaust uh, megaphones here. That's what they call those. Front grill here. So here's the front of it. This is, oops, sorry, this is the back of it. Sorry, sorry, woke my cat up. These are your taillights, I guess, or something. Could be wrong. Um, then you got some miscellaneous pieces here, which I think is your uh, other pedals and your door handles. So there you have it. It's uh, it's chromed okay. It looks a little rough on some areas, like it's kind of built up and just a little spotting here and there. But um, overall, the parts are very nicely detailed. Moving on the parts, or moving on to the parts, we're going to start with this first tree here. You only get three trees. Uh, this is the uh, the frame where everything is um, sitting. Get your engine mounts here. Very bland in detail and everything. Kind of flimsy too, in a way. And then here you have your front leaf springs. And then you have your rear leaf springs here. You have your steering um, 
steering rod, your drive shaft, you've got your um, rear shocks here. I believe that's what those are. Um, which is kind of odd that it came with these ones because on my um, on my uh, Saints and Demons version one, it came with uh, like racing shocks. So nothing like these ones, but it's all good. So these are your front ones. This is your axle, which is very flimsy. And once you put everything together, once you assemble it, this does droop and sag, which is very sad. So you can scratch build your own or look for aftermarket ones. Here's your traction bars for the rear. You can set of those two. Um, two halves of your, um, your axle, which is like a um, quick change rear end kind of uh, style. And then these things down here, just, I don't know what these, just extra parts, I guess, down here. And of course, you have your bucket seats, which have the built-in uh, seat stand. Um, minimal cleanup of the flash and everything like that, but nice raised detail. And then here you have your wheel hubs here. And then you've got your, uh, your ha uh, two halves of the spin front spindles and everything like that, which can be difficult to glue. And these are the rear, are the front trim rings for your rims, and these are the rear. You get a parachute. I know my other one doesn't have that. Um, then you got your two engine halves, the front engine cover. I don't know what this is. If you guys can tell me in the comments below what that is, that would be great. And these here, I think these might be a dual fuel, fil fuel uh, oil filter system, but let me know. There's your um, cylinder heads here, and there's your oil pan. Um, very bland in detail. Not a lot going on, a lot of flash to clean. Um, and there, there's going to be quite a bit of uh, fit issues as well. Next tree up to bat, we have the uh, front grill, which has got the uh, rat support down below uh, molded in. Um, and then it's all hollowed out here. I don't know why they have it hollowed out when it should be filled. But it's all good. This is the, um, the front corner, or these are the, uh, the hinges for your tilt front end. Here's your door panels, which has um, got some nice uh, raised detail going on here, kind of like a uh, like a button tuck kind of thing, like a biscuit tuck. It's got molded in door handles. And then of course you got the side where it looks um, gutted, but you got to remove a lot of injector pin marks that are everywhere, which that's a pain in the ass. Um, just like this one, it's hard to get those out. So, and then. Uh, you have your hinges and the hinge retainers right here. You have your doors, which are nicely molded, by the way. And then your doors come with uh, molded in door jams, so you don't have to build up those. You get the old school style um, roll cage, roll bar. And then um, here you have um, your upper hose, and I think this is the lower hose, I'm not sure. And then your firewall, which, oops, sorry. I keep waking up my cat when I'm dropping the parts. He's so sensitive. <laughs> I'm going to flip it like this. But um, I don't know if you guys can see, but the um, detail is very light. But there's some raised detail going on there. Thing is, it doesn't have a gear steering gearbox to connect to this part. So you have to kind of make your own or fetch one from the parts bin. Which is very unfortunate. So overall, the parts are pretty good. Need some minimal cleanup. And um, hopefully you don't run into any fit issues with that. And then here on this um, last uh, parts tree, you have the um, the front of the hood, the tops of the fenders. You have um, the bottom. Here's your dash, which has nice raised detail, but it's very hard to pick out. So there's your dash. There's the back seat with the uh, molded de uh, the molded in rear deck, which has got carpet simulation in there. And then here's the other halves to your fenders. These are the bottom half. And uh, the hood has some nice uh, raised detail going on in there, but you got to remove some injector pin marks, which takes away from that. And then here's your uh, floor pan. Um, has nice raised detail of the uh, rivets, uh, brake lines and stuff. You got to remove the stamping here. And some injector pin marks located here, which is very unfortunate. That takes away a lot from the kit. And then here's the top part of it. 
uh, which has got some kind of simulated wood detail here. And it's got little uh, slots for your seats. It's got the uh, some detail on the uh, transmission tunnel and all. And some more raised detail here, like rivet detail. So, but there you have it. Um, it is what it is, you know what I mean, you guys? But uh, it's a little minimal cleanup, and it should be good to go. Though there's a few things, you know, that's wrong with this kit. Um, pretty sure it's going to, you know, build up okay. Um, just got to put up with all that stuff, so... Um, a lot of it's a letdown. I mean, um, kind of wish they would have uh, took the time to really mold a, a really nice kit. You know what I mean? Like they do with the um, Corvette gasser and the uh, the uh, 56 Del Rio wagon um, gasser. So, but it is what it is. You know what I mean? Anyways, you guys, that concludes the uh, model kit review on the 51 Henry J gasser. Hopefully, all of you enjoyed. Uh, please leave me a comment below. Let me know what you guys are. Uh, let me know what your guys' thoughts are and what you guys are thinking about this particular kit and stuff like that share any experiences you might have or if you have the kit yourself or if you're building one but um again it is a very a rare kit and i only recommend this to um, experienced builders and stuff like that so anyways you guys so there's more videos to come and everything like that i got to get back to these projects and get to working um don't think i'm going to be working on this one anytime soon either this is one of those that i'm just going to sit around until i get around it so um, or unless I feel like I need a, need a little challenge or something. So, anyways, you guys. So, yeah, I'm going to let you guys go. So, keep your head up no matter what through all the struggle. Keep hope, keep faith, keep up the great work. Keep on building the model. Keep doing what you're doing. Keep having fun. Keep uh, doing it for the love of the hobby. Keep being true to yourself. Um, you know, keep doing it for the love of the art, you know. And don't bring your egos and your um, beasts to the workbench because that destroys a good thing. And, uh, you know, I know we all have a busy schedule. We all living our life but uh, let's take the time out to uh, answer back to our fans and people who have questions and all that sort of stuff so uh, that's that's good karma right there so I try to do that I try to answer back to everybody as much as I can so anyways um, gonna let you guys go so until the next video guys your boy Chaz custom custom model cars and signing out peace